Well, on Monday, Dr. Peter Hotez tweeted out, guessing we'll hit the 1,000 measles case mark by next week. What a terrible waste and tragedy due to an empowered and unopposed anti-vax movement in America. So what's Dr. Hotez talking about? Well, the new numbers came out from the CDC uh, on the outbreaks and the cases in the United States. And we see that from January 1st to May 24th, 940 individual cases of measles have been confirmed in 26 states. This is an increase of 60 cases. And of course, this is the greatest number of cases reported in the U.S. since 1994 and since measles was declared eliminated in 2000. Well, last month, um, the CDC released a news release on this um, with some quotes from the director, Robert Redfield. And here's what he had to say. Well, this current outbreak is deeply troubling, and I call upon all healthcare providers to assure patients about the efficacy and safety of the measles vaccine, said CDC Director Robert Redfield. And I encourage all Americans to adhere to the CDC vaccine guidelines in order to protect themselves and their families and their communities from measles and other vaccine preventable diseases. We must work together as a nation to eliminate this disease once and for all. And he, he talks about what I'm gonna follow up in a second is the outbreaks in New York City and New York State are among the largest and longest lasting since measles was eliminated in 2000. He goes on to say that the longer these outbreaks continue, the greater the chance measles will get a sustained foothold in the, in the United States. It's definitely something we don't want. And he talks about some of the contributing factors of the measles outbreaks, and that's, of course, importation. Uh, measles is imported when an unvaccinated traveler visits a country where there is widespread measles transmission, gets infected with measles, and returns to the U.S. and exposes people in a community who are not vaccinated. And of course, we're seeing that travelers from the Philippines, from the Ukraine, Thailand, and other um, uh, outbreak states, right, or outbreak countries right now around the world. And another contributing factor, and he calls it a significant factor contributing to the outbreaks in New York, is misinformation in the communities about the safety of the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine. Some organizations are deliberately targeting these communities with inaccurate and misleading information about vaccines. So yeah, we've been reading about those issues for uh, quite a while now, and, and they're definitely uh, out there, and there's flyers and all other kinds of crazy stuff that's just um, uh, horrible, horrible misinformation for these populations. So let's go over to New York. In New York City, we see that the latest update, as of today, there have been 550 confirmed cases in New York City since September. Most of these cases have involved members of the Orthodox Jewish community. Yeah, so yeah, the Brooklyn and Queens area have a very large outbreak. And we see that places like Borough Park, Williamsburg, of course, lots and lots of cases. Uh, looks like we got six brand new cases out of Willowbrook, Staten Island. So, yeah, the cases keep on growing in the Brooklyn area. And then, of course, there's a New York State where there's another outbreak in, in, there, in a number of different counties. And the New York Department of Health says, as of today, there are 310 confirmed cases of measles in New York State outside of New York City. So in addition to the 550 in New York City, we have another 310 statewide. Um, 254 in Rockland County, 36 in Orange County, 17 in Westchester, three in Sullivan County, one in Suffolk, and one in Greene County. So yeah, so 860 measles cases in New York State all alone. And the last thing I wanna talk about is this article that I found on the website Vaxopedia, it's by Dr. Vincent Ionelli. And he writes about the 12 things anti-vaccine parents get wrong. Anti-vaccine parents who skip or delay their child's vaccines think they are doing the right thing for their kids. They aren't. 
and he goes on to talk about the different things that they get wrong. Um, and these include, they get wrong the benefits of vaccines. It says, while vaccine advocates admit that vaccines are neither 100% safe nor 100% effective, you rarely see an anti-vaccine folk admit that vaccines have benefits as that would create too much cognitive dissonance for them. Uh, shedding, everything you have read about vaccine shedding and shedding season likely isn't true. The risk of vaccines, although vaccines are not 100% safe, as I have already said, anti-vaccine folks typically overstate the risk, making you think that they cause all of the vaccine injuries and vaccine-induced diseases that you read about online. And they talk about the benefits of natural immunity. And true, while natural immunity is great, it is important to understand that it comes with a cost. You have to survive a disease to get those benefits, and not everyone does, at least not without some complications. Another one is forced vaccination. A vaccine mandate to attend school is not forced vaccination, he says. The risk of vaccine preventable diseases, a big one, most folks don't understand the true risks of vaccine preventable diseases anymore because vaccines work so well to keep them under control. But it's important to remember that these life-threatening diseases, that these are life-threatening diseases and we will see more outbreaks and more fatalities and complications if they continue to come back. The risk of getting sick. If you are unvaccinated and unprotected, you are hiding in the herd you are at risk to catch a vaccine preventable disease. And then of course the big pharma conspiracies. It is silly to think that we have been able to keep global big pharma conspiracy without, about vaccines a secret, right? Toxins, and clearly Dr. Ionelli says there are no toxic ingredients in vaccines. Uh, the risk of getting others sick. Who else is going to get sick if you start an outbreak? someone who is too young to be vaccinated or can't be vaccinated because they have a problem with their immune system. Vaccine choice. Since there is no forced vaccination, talk of vaccine choice is simply anti-vaccine folks complaining because they don't like all the choices they have been given, even as they are very happy to take away the choice of the rest of us to not have to worry about outbreaks of vaccine preventable diseases. And lastly, placebos. Although they are now fixated on this, it is important to keep in mind that a placebo doesn't have to be saline or an inert substance, a standard that is only set by anti-vaccine folks. So what else do anti-vaccine parents get wrong? They are very wrong if they are making the right decision in skipping and delaying their child's vaccines. So. Anyway, so that's uh, what I got today. A lot more measles in uh, New York State, New York City, 860 total. All right, well, give us a thumbs up if you want. Hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time for the next Infectious Disease News Brief. And don't forget to check us out at the website, OutbreakNewsToday.com, the podcast, Outbreak News Interviews, which can be found on the website, on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, and Spotify. And the Outbreak News This Week radio show, which is aired Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time in the Tampa Bay area on AM 1380 The Biz or online streaming at 1380thebiz.com. And check out our social media presence, Facebook at Infectious Disease News and Twitter at BackDman63. Outbreak News TV is a production of The Global Dispatch. Copyright The Global Dispatch Incorporated. 2019.